Welcome. We went to Europe. And we got books. 29. So here are they. Here are they. Here are they. <coughs> We're also sick. We're you may sick. have already. There's noises outside. We have 29 books that we had to put in our suitcases to come back from Europe. <laughs> we had to get an extra bag to bring all of these back. We have to get an extra back. bag to bring them back. Let's start with We're some gonna English, start with the English books, books that we bought because they're the least amount of books. We weren't. We said that when we were going to go over, we're only going to buy books in French and German because oh, why shoot. would we buy English books? I brought four of these. Yeah, Matt just kind of bought a bunch of books in English. Well, I only bought the books because we went to the store in France, uh, Shakespeare and Company in Paris, and so I bought uh, some Shakespeare. I got Macbeth because this was a nice version I thought I would like. You see right there, it's very pretty, and so I got that because we were at Shakespeare and Company. I also got some Hemingway, based on the history of the store. I figured, you know, why not? And then I also got um, On Reading, Writing, and Living with Books, which is a collection of stories and nonfiction, basically memoirs, by a bunch of authors and prolific readers, which I read both of these in Europe. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's also talk about how Matt already them. finished these books before we even brought them home. Yep. And then, while we were at Shakespeare and Company, we learned that the next day, Ben Levita and Dave Eggers would be doing a reading there, and Dave Eggers is my favorite author. So we went back, and this is the one time I bought one thing, was we got these so that we could get them signed while we were there. So this them. is a worthy purchase, I feel, in English. Um, so it's got all of our Shakespeare and Company books at the little stamp, and then yeah. these are signed, and... So I got your father's Where Are They and the Prophets Do They Live Forever. And I got How We Are Hungry. And granted, I will admit I did read this while we were in Europe, so... Those are our English books. And now we move on to fun language books, language which you books. actually care about. Yes. Let's start with France, because we went to France first. And so, we got so many books. Uh, <laughs> my goal going into Europe was to get one literature book and one language learning book in French and in German. Which is like four books, right? That's not bad. Which is four books. Um, as you can see, didn't happen. But I didn't have any goal going in. I just knew with, I was gonna buy so many books. Our first day in France. We're this on the Champs Elysees. Day. Yeah, it was. And I bought a book because I was like, I want to get a literature book while we're here, but I wanted to get something that was this in a drugstore. either fun or something I was interested in English too. So I bought All the Light We Cannot See, which is not a fun read from what I've heard. It's it's great though. But I, I wanted English. to read it in English for a long time. So and it takes place and in it France. takes place in France. And so I felt like it was kind of perfect. Oh wait, there's one more English book. One more English book. Um, also at Shakespeare and Company, the first day we went, when Matt bought the three books, yep. I bought, I wanted to get something with the stamp because I didn't know we were going to come back the next day. So I bought The Little Prince in, in English. English. I wish I could have you? gotten it in French, but yeah, so I bought The Little Prince. <laughs> Not bad. While we were at the Louvre, the we Louvre. discovered that the Louvre has a bookstore. So while we were there, I bought understanding the architecture of Paris, yep. um, which is in French. Um, and because we discovered that we really like architecture and so we wanted to learn more about it, so I got this and basically it goes through like a bunch, like here's a bunch of places and then it goes through each place. While I was there, I bought two little books because of my French level I don't think is too great. Why I got these, I'm kind of not sure. I think I kind of just wanted to get something. I got a book by David Henry Thoreau, which is just a nice short little read. Um, and then I got a book of... <coughs> I got a book of quotes, which are, uh, this is basically a bilingual uh, reader on Vincent van Gogh. 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 <laughs> After the Louvre on that same day, we went to a bookstore, which we'd been trying to go to for several Back days. Joseph. Yes, and there's several in Paris, so we, we went to the one, one near the Latin Quarter, I think. But mm -hmm. if you're going to Paris, we can't say that just that store in general is great. But the one we went to had a really big it's like seven selection. floors. Um, yeah, it was like seven floors. One of the floors had a huge language section. Like it was an, enti an entire wall of So we like went a little crazy because also things were very cheap. Mm -hmm. So um, my expectations of getting one French to other language book were Smashed. madly exceeded. Matt, like he said, doesn't feel his French is even that great, but he bought like bought a, a bunch a of French of to other language books, which I think was so, going to be fun. We're excited to start laddering. Yep. 
people have been asking us for so long if we've ever used ASML and how we feel about it, and we oh, always have to be like, just wait. I've never used There's so it. much ASML wait, now. You still can't talk over me. Now I've got to do it again. Sorry. So we're gonna start with phrase books, and people have been asking us for so long if we've used ASML and what we think about it. And we always have to tell them that we haven't used it, but that we really want to try. So we kind of went crazy on ASML while we were there. You'll see the majority of the books we got are ASML. I have four ASML um, books now. I also have four ASML books now. So, nice. so to begin with, we have phrase books. Um, mine both will look the same and Matt looks a little bit different. So I don't know if one is like an older version of ASML phrase books or something, but newer. basically I got Esperanto because you never see Esperanto phrase books or anything. Never and I figure one. I can probably learn something from this. I might not get a ton, but I mean, maybe there's a phrase I've never thought to say that now I'll know how to say it. And it's pretty cool. So I'm excited about that. And then the other one I got is Haitian Creole because again, you never see resources for this, but there were a ton of things like that in France. And then in Germany, there were a ton of dialect resources yeah. and stuff. So I was excited to get to see things like this. There were kind of like all of the Creoles of that area um, yeah, there was were so there. Many. there was but so I've wanted to learn Haitian Creole for a while. So I got this phrase book to start. I didn't get like a full big book, but I got this phrase book. And I think it's really interesting too, because you can kind of see the comparison in here between French and, and Haitian Creole. Creole so. yeah. And then I got a Russian phrase book, which is basically, it says a guide de conversation. That's which what has, these say too, like a pocket sized conversation guide. It's got like so maybe that's lessons. the difference between these two, although they're the exact same size. So. Yeah, really. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing some Russian for quite some time, and so I figured, you know, um, I wound up getting a German book in Russian as well, which you'll see later. So I feel like Russian is going to be on my radar pretty soon. Don't know when, but I figured having a nice little pocket guide to do you hear that. It's nature. Wow, more Asimil. Asimil books. Um, I guess maybe let's do these first. You want to do those? Okay. So, so moving on this to is the bigger a series. ASML. This is a series that um, I don't think I knew was out yet, um, or that existed at all, I didn't know. And uh, when I saw it, I got very excited because they had like maybe five languages in it. I think I've seen these in America. Actually. You have? Yeah. I have, and uh, I got two. So, of those, I guess... I have Dutch and Japanese. And then I also have Japanese because Matt and I are learning Japanese together. Um, for those of you that didn't watch the live stream, your update is that we're no longer learning Spanish together. I was learning Japanese anyway, and Matt was just kind of feeling that language a bit more. So we picked up these cute little ASML books, and I don't think that it's going to get us to a super high level, but no, cause by the they're end you're really doing like months. cute, and I'm sure that it will get us to a nice basis in the language before we go into something a little bit harder. I agree. I'm very excited for these. And then as for my Dutch one, I have always wanted to learn Dutch. I have got a Dutch friend, Dutch friends, and um, recently he has tried to teach me some Dutch, and um, I don't know, I find Dutch, written Dutch, easy to understand because of German and Norwegian, but um, spoken Dutch I have no idea what to do with, so I think this will help um, my reading and writing of Dutch, but it's a place to start. Um, we both got, the sort of ASML book that I think most people are asking if we've used before is the uh, like whatever language without pain series that ASML has. Neither of us had. So we finally picked up one of these for each of us. Polish. And I got Bulgarian. Which seems to be a very old book if you look at the cover of this. I basically wanted to get a Bulgarian book because can't buy Bulgarian resources really in America. Nope and everyone knows I've had a lot of trouble finding Bulgarian resources. So I found a Bulgarian book for ASML and I figured even though I kind of have other books that are supposed to be kind of the equivalent of this from different series. Um, Flattering French I to think Bulgarian that it, is pretty cool. Yeah, I think there's that and then I think having another one won't hurt. Plus I would like to try at some point maybe doing a comparison between this Teach Yourself and Colloquial yep. between all of the Bulgarians because not much available, to see do what's that. the best. So, yeah. I originally had like four Bulgarian books you were like, I need in them our all. thing because I was like, um, and so I decided to just kind of put books in our basket and then decide at the end what I was going to get. A little grammar of Bulgarian. Which I think is really cute. I think it's always handy to have at least one grammar book per, per language that I'm learning. And obviously I don't necessarily come across Bulgarian ones very easily. Yeah, really. So I figured this would be good. No. So next, we went to Germany. So we went to a lot of bookstores in Germany, but really didn't have the luck that we had in, in France. France. 
basically in the end for language books we ended up going to this place called Dussman uh, mm -hmm. which I got recommended by Chuck Smith because he lives yep. in Germany and I asked him to recommend some book places for us and there's a specific Dussman you're supposed to go to on uh, Friedrichstrasse if you want a language book selection but other than that we kind of checked out a lot of bookstores and their book selection for language books was about the size it is in America, where it's very, yeah. very tiny. I will start off with the <coughs> Reklam series, which is a series of German publications that is really old. I actually don't know much of the history of it, but if you ever see these tiny books, we have some of these in America, which are published in German. They're a very popular series, popular series for um, kind of uh, classic fiction, and they do have some nonfiction. And actually, I believe the publication of them is still very strong in Germany. They have like they've kind of spread out, and they're a bit more modern now. Uh, but I bought uh, Der Schimmelreiter, uh, Die Verwandlung from Kafka, Gedichte, poems from Nietzsche, Fried, and I got 50 poems from Rainer Maria Rilke, which uh, I really like him, so I'm really excited to read that. The font is really small, so even though their size is very small, they're kind of deceiving. The first one that I got is The Lightning Thief, the first Percy Jackson book in German. Which is huge in German. Um, yeah. Much like in French, I wanted to find something that I was interested in reading, and I've actually never read any of the Percy Jackson books. Not an actually... adult book yet, but it's still kind of... There are adults that enjoy this series, yeah. and I haven't read it yet, so it'll be something new to me, and... So yeah. And we've actually been doing this thing where we kind of sit down and read it together and then I can kind of act as like a translator for words or grammar that you're not getting and even when there's words I don't know, I'll look them up and we can write them down together. So it's actually been really fun and I think we're going to do a video on that like when we go more through this book or mm -hmm. maybe finish it. Um, the one we'll, thing we'll is that it's very daunting and I'm tempted to read this other book that I got first because <laughs> it's a little bit smaller and more manageable. Um, because there are a lot of words that I don't recognize in this book, but I am excited to get through this book and then I think I'm just going to continue with this series in German then, so that gives me something to read. I got Douglas Adams, the first book in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is that the name in English? Yeah, no, I picked this up in a nice little bookstore right outside, the, right in the town we were staying in in Germany. Book I haven't read in English yet, why not? You haven't read that in English? No. Wow. Yeah. Fancy me surprised. We were looking at You're right, the I manga. Didn't both of us. Um, Matt didn't end up getting anything, but I decided that I definitely wanted to get a manga because I haven't read one in a long time and because it's got pictures in it and that it, it's broken up with dialogue and there's not a lot of description and that sort of thing, it seemed like a very easy read yeah. and something that I could get through a bit quicker and feel like I've read a book in German. So I ended up getting Sailor Moon because again, I haven't ever read Sailor Moon or watched Sailor Moon or anything, but I'm excited to get to practice my German skills a little bit. Yeah, we were both sitting there and like looking at the manga. We both really wanted to get a manga because um, it's like reading comics in another language basically. and. Mm -hmm the fact that I, I wanted to get Attack on Titan in German because that's a show I've watched in English with Japanese subtitles. Um, no, the other way around, in Japanese with English subtitles. <laughs> um, but like reading that through another language I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. So that's something I think it'll be really interesting to see how you like that. Lastly, we have Books. our stuff from Dustman, which is significantly smaller than our French language book pile. There's only three more books for we us to show you. We were also feeling really sick when we went here, so we kind of had to not stay as long as we would have liked. At the same time, we'd already gone through the whole store and yeah. done several rounds, and we actually did this fun thing where I picked out my books, and then Matt kind of didn't know what he wanted. Yeah, I was So he confused. basically told me, he's like, I'm gonna go look at just fiction books right yeah. now. I want you to go through and pick a book for me. And then she was like, ooh, I can pick you a language. Um, so basically so I asked like Matt questions, questions about what language. Yeah, about what language, like yeah. did he want something new, something he'd studied before, a new writing system, like yeah. what grammar, that kind of thing. And basically I came back with like three or four different oh. languages. Yep. And then we kind of narrowed it down from there. Yep. And now we have Einfach Russisch. Russisch. I said this the other day. I can't say the name of Russian in R German, but it's an easy Russian reader. But I picked a different Russian book for him, and he decided he didn't want like a full Russian textbook because he's got Russian books here at home. Yeah. So uh, he ended up going back and getting this Russian reader. So I think it was supposed to be your next language. That was the point, Matt. Well, I'm Hungarian. It's true. And then I had this goal going in. I was so set, and it kind of sucked that selection wasn't really the best for the no. language that I came in set on getting but I knew I had as well as my goal of getting like a literature book and a language learning book I knew that I wanted a German to Scandinavian language yep. for my language learning so at one point we both sat down and we listened 
to the three Scandinavian languages that I was torn between, which are Danish, Swedish, and Norwegian, the, the big ones. Chinese Mainly language. learning towards Danish and Swedish, mm -hmm. so it was kind of a toss-up between those two, and I ended up deciding on Swedish. So then I went into the bookstore, was set on my Swedish book, and couldn't find that great of a selection, but then I found a book that I like, which you're about to hear a very sad tale about. <laughs> so a lot of books in Germany are sold as textbook and work, and I, I'm fine with that. And sometimes I'd actually also love to answer have, booklet. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love to use a series like that. I was like, sweet, I'll look around. And then I found this one that was from a series that does stuff like that, but this one seemed to just be a textbook, and I was like, sweet only one book and it's like 10 euro nothing's that cheap in this store so I got that and then somehow three days later realized that this is only the workbook so now you've got to order online from I, that store. I don't know how I thought this was a full text <laughs> because it's very obviously only a workbook I think that's like I was very sick and my in my fevered state I was like a full textbook this will get and me it to literally A1. says Übungsbuch yeah no somehow somehow I left with this. Very Basically, good. I'd found another series that I really liked that's entirely in Swedish. It's and all had A1, A2, and so I wanted to get that book, but you kind of needed to already be in A1 to start. Uh, so I was like, I'll get something that only brings me up to A1, and yep. it'll be perfect. This tiny little book, I'll be A1, and then I'll start with that series. But I only have the workbook, so I need to figure out what I'm doing there now, yeah. because the store also didn't have the textbook, otherwise I probably would have known. And then this other book that she got, it, they had so many languages for this. This and other book, really I'd exciting. seen at another store, but I was like, no, I want a Swedish textbook. I don't want this book. But then after I, I bought a Swedish textbook too, I was like, I, I also, I was planning on getting this when I got back, but then I realized based on the company name, this is a German company, so I don't think I oh, can actually get them here. What? So, I got this, which is like a... More than Fjorden. Yes. Lord. Although that sounds very much so Norwegian. Sorry. Um, but it's an A1 Swedish reader. Cool. Um, and it's got three it's short a land stories. I caught creamies. You don't have to talk. Alright. Um, so it's a, a Swedish reader for A1. And basically inside it's got a story. And then it's got the, letter, the words you don't know in red. And then it has a little word bank. And then there's also exercises for grammar. So there's a bunch of grammar points, like each chapter is a different grammar point or something that you're supposed to learn as well. Hmm. Um, so... On, your, on the ferry from Sweden to Norway. Okay. Decided to go through this at some point. So basically I was trying to get A1 resources and then I'd switch to the other resource when I was an A1, but now I have to figure out what I'm doing there. So I might be buying another Swedish book soon. <laughs> That'll make it 30. Yeah, Would you although that no. So that's our 29 books 29 that we bought. Books. Have you bought any books recently? Please Let tell us, us about them. Let us know if you have places that you prefer to buy books. Especially if you have places in New York or around New York. Or America. The camera died, so now we're out really far. But <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, do let us know your favorite places to buy books. It doesn't matter what country they're in. We are happy to We've got to go. It's turning red. Thanks ah, for watching. Thank Bye. you guys. Practice makes progress. Keep reading.